don't know. About 8 30. We gotta hurry, man. How come? Cause we don't wanna miss it. Davy Sharp said every night at 8 30, like old faithful. He's a seventh grader. Said we see. 20 times to get the Hoosiers to the College Cup. UCLA and Indiana have quite a history. They've won the last two national championships. In 97, UCLA took unbeaten Indiana to overtime at the College Cup. That semifinal exhausted all emotions. In overtime, it was then freshman McKinley Tennyson's golden goal that was sudden death for previously perfect Indiana. The Hoosiers had to wait a year for their crown. Now those two teams meet again for the chance to dance into the title game. It's the semifinal round of the NCAA tournament, the Men's College Cup. UCLA taking on Indiana at Erickson Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. Alongside Ty Keogh, I'm Jack Edwards. Glad you could be with us for this game. A couple of years ago, these bitter rivals met, as we told you. And in that game, UCLA was the underdog. Well, Indiana comes into this game the higher seeded team again but maybe Indiana could be the underdog on this night well it's hard to talk about the defending champion Indiana Hoosiers as underdogs especially when they have players of this quality the Ukraine Dynamos Alexei Karol Yuri Lavrenenko both came up in the Dynamo Kiev youth soccer system came to the United States in 92 went to high school here and then came on for Indiana what a difference they've made three consecutive men's college cups for Indiana well, UCLA is stacked this is a team with tremendous depth and they showed that at the Pan Am games this past summer Summer, the U.S. team with five UCLA players winning the bronze medal there. Well, for the UCLA Bruins, so much international experience, and that could make a difference here. Sasha Victorine, number 12, he's a front runner for both the under-23 men's national team and for the UCLA Bruins. And last week in the quarterfinal at Virginia, after a pass from Shea Travis, Sasha Victory put away the winner to eliminate Virginia and bring the Bruins to the semifinals. McKinley Tennyson runs in tandem up front with Sasha Victorine, and their size and speed could be devastating to the Indiana defense. One of the players who plays off of them is Pete Vianis, a two-time team MVP for the Bruins. UCLA and Indiana getting set to go. We're back in a full. Is brought to you by Adidas. Long live sport. By Chevrolet. Chevy will be there. And by InternetSoccer.com. Connecting the soccer world. We are at beautiful Erickson Stadium, which is the home of the NFL's Carolina Panthers. UCLA and Indiana getting set to go here in the national semifinals. Nick Romando says... What he likes about soccer is winning. What he dislikes is fitness. <laughs> <laughs> Here are the Adidas starting lineups. At UCLA in a 4-3-3, and Carlos Bocanegra, one of the best defenders in all of college soccer. In fact, he scored a goal in the Pan Am Games in the third place game to beat Canada. T.J. Hannig in goal for Indiana, number five of the nation in goals against average, 0.48. And in Indiana with attacking options that we talked about of the Ukraine variety, but number three, Nick Garcia, he's leading the defense in a 3-5-2. Garcia was a defensive MVP of last year's Men's College Cup. Ty, now your youthsports.com keys to the match. Well, especially for UCLA, we talked about their front runners so strong. Sasha Victorine and McKinley Tennyson, they have to get them in. They also have many other attacking options out of midfield and even out of the back. And Mahanis as well as Chikiris are a big part of that. They're playmaking through midfield. And Lavrinenko, number five for IU, is their playmaker. They have to get the ball to him. He's the one that gets it up to Alexi Karol. And IU, always very good on their corner kicks and free kicks, especially with Lavrinenko serving balls into the box. The weather is perfect. It's calm. It's 52 degrees. The field's a little bit rough, especially between the football hash marks, which you can see as one would expect from the condition of an NFL field in December. Now, right away... Indiana playing a long ball, but Bocanegra playing it wide. The target men, number 13, Alexi Carroll, and number 18, Matt Fundenberger. There's Fundenberger playing it back. Hard challenge in midfield right away, and a foul against UCLA. Todd Saldana took over the program for Ziggy Schmidt when Schmidt went to the L.A. Galaxy and proceeded to win Major League Soccer Coach of the Year honors. Saldana knows the program well, having been a longtime assistant. This is Carroll, who is sweet with the ball. 
He fans and Lee sends it up the right side. Now in the middle, Ryan Mack. Noonan. Vianus. He's run off by Tauber and it goes out of bounds. Indiana legend Jerry Yegley. <laughs> Look at the wins. 476 career wins in 27 seasons. And four NCAA championships. He's here to find the fifth one. Nick Garcia also a part of that Pan Am team heading it upfield and here comes Indiana on the counterattack. This is Carroll. Carroll going to work against Adam Cooper. Carroll holding the ball now sending it right side for Lavrinenko who will be all over the field. Out of bounds and Lavrinenko will take the throw. We'll take a look at his number five Lavrinenko all night long. He really doesn't even have a set position. He goes where he's needed most. Max swinging it wide. Snow over onto the wing. A feed right through the middle. Mack turns it toward the middle. A great chance for Fundenberger. Nearly an own goal. Cooper steered it wide inadvertently. I didn't even think he knew the ball was at his feet. He couldn't find it. Real nice approach play by the Indiana Hoosiers as they swung the ball around from side to side. A good through ball by Noonan. And then the cross here. Look at how close Carroll came to putting it away. And wow. An own goal to start off in practically the first minute of a national semifinal. How devastating would that have been? Lavrenko and Max setting up the short corner. Fundenberger's knees are already torn up. This will be another corner kick for Indiana. The challenge by Sean Chakiris. Well, Lavrenko, the playmaker right there, your number five. Number 13 for Indiana, Alexi Carroll. He's the scalpel. Fundenberger is the battering ram. <laughs> and there they stack it up in the goal mouth. Indiana with the corner. Tauber sending it to the penalty spot, headed out of there. And Tennyson clearing to midfield, but Snow collects. In the first couple of minutes here, it's all Indiana. Fundenberger quickly trying to play it ahead for Carroll, but Ramondo is out to control it. Quickly playing it low and fast, and McKinley Tennyson has a break. UCLA trying to counter with numbers. Tennyson outside of the foot pass comes into the middle. Here's a chance for Vianus. He has to fight for the ball. Right in the middle, Garcia and Vianus. U.S. national team teammates on the under-23 team. They had a tangle, and it'll be a free kick for Indiana. Well, it's Tennyson out racing John Swan. A poor clearance here initially. And Nick Garcia, as always, to the rescue. Put his arm out to stiff arm Vianus, and Vianus was dumb enough to pull on it and got called for the holding. Noonan, a little chip header. Funnenberger sends it down toward the corner. Noonan was thinking the run was going to be to the inside, and it goes out of bounds. UCLA with the throw, and back comes Victorine. A little tricky play through midfield for Chakiris. Now it's Tennyson laying it back for Cooper. Cooper, long ball up for Chakiris. He's chasing it into the corner. Correction, that's Travis. And it's out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Indiana. We're going to see a lot of that. Nick Garcia coming over to cover defensively for Indiana. There's some mismatches, really, in the marking assignments out in front of him. He's the free player, then, to, to plug up any holes. Swan with the long throw. A couple of pop-ups in midfield. Vianus, great touch in traffic. Panino plays it back right side for Lee. Lee sending it long up the right side for Victorine. Can he turn it? Victorine going to work on Fedeski. Fedeski volleys it. Settled out there. Panino out of the right side. Lee fires right for the spot. Garcia heads it out. Vianus settles 30 yards from goal. On the left for Cooper. Cooper the challenge there from Snow. Into the middle. Tennyson going for the turn. Vianus's drive goes wide and out of bounds. Boy, I'll tell you what. This game is being played at a tremendous pace, especially in comparison with the first semifinal we saw. Both of these teams love to attack. We've already seen it at both ends. We'll play two 45-minute halves. There will be a timeout about midway through each half if it's tied at the end of regulation. And don't you know this if you saw Santa Clara in Connecticut? There will be four 15-minute sudden death periods. Santa Clara scoring in the fourth OT to beat Connecticut 2-1 and move into Sunday's championship game. You can see that battle 
for the College Cup at 1 Eastern on ESPN Live on Sunday. Here's McKinley Tennyson. A little traffic there. Mack trying to settle it. He has to touch it backward. Tauber heads it up for Lavernenko. Oh, Lavernenko in a tough spot, finding some room for himself. Long crossing pass for Mack. Lavernenko wants it back, and he's going to get it. Heads it directly for the penalty spot. Tremendous cross. And Romando comes off his line. Well, Lavernenko showing a lot of creativity on the wing, Ty. Well, he's been given some space when he floats out to the flanks, especially on this right side. It's something that UCLA will have to correct because he can't pinpoint with those crosses Alexi Carroll. Noonan beats Lee. Now he's got a little space. He creates the opportunity up ahead for Fundenberger, ridden off the play nicely. Bocanegra coming back to clean out the middle. Travis laying it off. Panino. His pass intercepted, and Snow is on the go. Snow just firing at middle. Shaq playing it back. Indiana defensively different from the other three teams here at the Men's College Cup. They have man marking assignments and the matchups I think are a little bit mismatches which is why it's good that they do have Nick Garcia free as the sweeper in behind but Fideski's got number nine for Indiana. He's got his hands full with McKinley Tennyson. The counterattack sprung by Lavernenko's good work. But the short passing combination broken up. Vianus wins the 50-50 ball in midfield. Now Fedeski wearing the captain's armband. Pops it up toward the middle. Tennyson on it for UCLA. Somebody's got to settle this ball. It's Fedeski. Or check it. Panino. Tennyson with a little break left side. Fires it toward the spot. Hard tackle on a big collision. But Indiana manages to clear. Here's Lee on the right side. He bangs with Noonan. And let it go. And Noonan will bring it back for the Hoosiers. The matchup is actually number nine, Fideski, on Sasha Victory. On the near side, it's John Swan against McKinley Tennyson. And those are those battles, the outcome of those one-on-one -on -one battles could determine the outcome of this game. And, and here's the marking assignment. Fideski, number nine, trying to stay with Sasha Victory. He gets to the ball first, but look at the physical punishment that Victorine dishes out on that play. And there they are again. Victorine trying to get the ball across in the middle, but it goes out over the end line for a goal kick. To Indiana. We see the high speed precision of UCLA, the counter punching ability of Indiana. A couple of wild cards in the mix with number five in white, Lavrinenko, displaying some fantastic skill. There's Todd Saldana, the first year coach of UCLA, 19 and 2, and in the national semifinals. Picking up right where Ziggy Schmidt left off. Noonan trying to run onto it out of bounds. It'll be a UCLA throw in far side. Ryan Lee looking for something. Tennyson gives it away and Taubert comes back. Hits Fundenberger in the back. Shaq coming cross field. Cooper here. Cooper has Travis wide, elects to come into the middle to Vianus. Vianus, nice turn. Victorine hits Vianus right in the chest. Tough return. That wasn't what Vianus was looking for. I think that pass was intended for Panino farther across. Indiana on the counter. Long ball. Easily handled in the back. Bocanegra to Cooper. Travis settles it. Panino. Vianus, Shaq, Tennyson trying to run onto it. Swan on the challenge. Tennyson fires it toward the middle. Flag is up on the far side. Well, that's the other man-on-man -man marking assignment for the Indiana Hoosiers. John Swan on McKinley Tennyson. And Swan actually went to Coach Jerry Yagley and says, I want to mark Tennyson out of the game. They played against each other back in Indiana in high school over the years, and he felt he knew him well enough that he could take him out of the game. And what a challenge for John Swan against Tennyson. Garcia for Lavrinenko outside of the foot flick. Garcia was looking to get involved in the attack, but the pass was behind. Now here comes Lavrinenko. Fires it right toward the penalty arc. Fundenberger leaves it off. 
This is Mack, 30 yards out. On the right for Lavernenko. Lavernenko goes directly for the middle, blocked out of there by Cooper. It'll be a corner kick for Indiana. Well, there's Lavernenko, who has such outstanding skill. Five goals and 11 assists. The 11 assists topping the Hoosiers this year. And here's a great chance for one as he sets up the corner. An out swinger to the top of the six. UCLA heads it out. Swan touching it wide. Garcia turns and fires it toward the middle. Back come the Bruins. It's Travis. He has Tennyson up ahead. Tackled away. Lavernenko will turn it back. That was Carroll on the tackle. Carroll a little outside touch to Fundenberger. Fundenberger exchanges a whack with Bocanegra. And it goes out of bounds. It'll be a goal kick UCLA. Now Carlos Bocanegra very strong in the tackle. They're able to ride Fundenberger right out of the play. Victorine up for the challenge, and it bounces all the way through. Fedeski blasts it off of Travis. It'll be an Indiana throw-in. We're about 12 minutes into the first half, national semifinals. This is the Men's College Cup coming your way from Erickson Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. Along with Ty Keo, I'm Jack Edwards. Indiana wearing white, UCLA in blue. The winner gets Santa Clara, a 4-OT winner over UConn in the national championship game on Sunday. Chip pass long for tennis and he's in. He flicks it for goal and it goes over the top. Oh, it explodes into an attack so quickly from the sideline. Just that close. In fact, it, I believe it nicked the top of the crossbar. Tennyson, good leaping ability, gets it past Swan, lifts it. Was it touched? By Hennig, the goalkeeper for Indiana, but it did touch the top of the crossbar. Shakiris, creative in midfield, getting things moving there. Now Labrinenko, the outside of the foot pass. Here's a long ball right side for Mack, tries to one-time it into striking distance, and it bounces out over the end line. Uh, if you saw earlier today, the first semifinal, it was a great contrast in styles. Connecticut very deliberate, working the ball with short passes. Santa Clara going for the long ball counterattack. This is a much more dynamic game. Two teams evenly matched, both playing with tremendous pace. Fianis settling at 50 yards from goal. Victorine couldn't make the turn, tackled away. And Mack onto the right side. Here's a long run for Snow. Cooper trying to track him down. Fires to the penalty arc. Shaq, not a good clear. Bocanegra comes over to rescue him. Well, number 20 in blue. Shaq, an interesting story. He walked on for UCLA. Won a spot on the roster. Ziggy Schmidt said the next year, well, he's still not guaranteed a spot. So he got himself in killer shape, and he won the spot, and he said, all right, now you're on. <laughs> Centering ball, Fundenberger. Going against Cooper. Man, Fundenberger is a tank out there. That is a lot of young man. 5'10", 180, but he plays like about 220. Carroll could have been called for a high cleat, but they let it go. Labyrinthenko going to work, spinning, firing it back, intended for Fundenberger. Running hard, and it's off the corner flag. It'll be a throw-in. Imagine Fundenberger and McKinley Tennyson playing on the same team. Four high school championships in Indiana. They could have gone to IU together, but no, no. <laughs> no, Tennyson had to go Hollywood. <laughs> Fundenberger stayed home. They both had fantastic careers, and they got a year to go after this one. And I selfishly hope they both end up in MLS because that's the future right there. Really exciting, explosive, offensive players. Travis chipping for Tennyson. He flicks it on. This is Chakiris. Ridden off the play. Tauber gave him a poke. Vianus wants the stoppage. Not going to get it. Play on. Here's Lavrinenko. Long ball. Karol got whacked from behind. Funnenberger controls against Cooper. Goes right for goal. Oh. Spins wide. Man, that thing had some English on it. But he meant it, too. I think... 
who is trying to surprise Ramondo because every other ball from this part of the field by Indiana so far has been a cross. And this time, he looks up as if he's going to cross and then with power tried to beat Ramondo to that near upper post. And he, he certainly had enough velocity on the shot to do it. He just missed a little bit on accuracy. Cooper plays it up for tennis and a little push and he gets away with it. It's going to deflect toward the sideline. Great speed to keep it in. Snow back. Hard tackle. Tennyson keeps his feet still on it. Can he cut it back? Goes short post and misses wide. Well, it's end to end. Just had the chance by Fundenberger at the other end. Tennyson here dancing through several defenders. Exhibiting outstanding balance. First of all, to keep the ball in play. Now watch him ride through this tackle here. Oh. Keeps his balance. Another one around. He's just maybe too fatigued at the end of that run to really hit the ball the way he meant to hit it. I thought he was going to slip it back, but elected to stop the short post. Well, you know, he never really looked up, but I looked, and there wasn't really one, anyone out there for him to target with the ball, let's say, outside the six-yard box. Now, both teams' back lines are getting back in good numbers, but both teams really trying to create opportunities. This is Mack distributing it to Lavernenko. Shipping it back to Mack, working against Cooper on the wing. Fires it right into the middle. Fundenberger backing up, but Shaq is there. Lavernenko heads it out wide for Noonan. Lee steals and fires long. Garcia unopposed. Settles it with the header. Fedeski. Vianus for UCLA. This is Mack. Vianus picks his pocket. Fedeski belts it right back to Vianus. Victorine on the touch, trying to go around Tarver, but it runs out of bounds. Sasha Victorine named as the Missouri Athletic Club Collegiate Player of the Year for 1999. So he's got a little bit of pressure on him to perform here at the semifinals. UCLA wearing the blue, Indiana in white alongside Ty Keogh. I'm Jack Edwards, and you're watching ESPN's coverage of the Men's College Cup, the National Championship Tournament. Victorine, it's over him. Garcia controls, brings it right back. Both of these teams immediately look for counterattack. This is Carroll, who's a magician, in close with Fundenberger. Bocanegra taking it out of there, and Shaq heads it clear. Long ball, good challenge in the air. Swan winning it for Indiana. Lavrenenko with a man on his back. It's Panino on the foul. It'll be a free kick for Indiana. Well, it's going to be Panino, Nick Panino's job really to track more closely on Yuri Lavrenenko. We saw in the early moments Lavrenenko finding space out on the flanks, getting some dangerous crosses in. And Nick Panino, as a defensive midfielder for UCLA, is going to need to close that down. Lavrenenko teeing up the ball 42 yards away as if he's looking for net here. <laughs> I mean, this guy has got the skills. He can put the ball just about wherever he wants it. He's swinging it to the far post, but nobody's crashing for Indiana. Either a misread in signals or not exactly where Lavrenenko did want it. Tennyson outside of the foot trying to go square for Victorine. Back to midfield. Chakiris, Tennyson knee-high ball, tough serve. Lavrenenko gets a foot in on it. Oh, nice work by Noonan in traffic. Lavrenenko going long for Carroll. Ramondo way out. He may not like fitness, but he was fit on that one. He read the play from midfield and sprinted out to pick it off. Well, like most goalkeepers, what a character Nick Ramondo is, UCLA's <laughs> backstopper. Seriously, have you ever met a goalie who was all there? Uh, not to this day. <laughs> not going to happen. Not in this lifetime. you got to be nuts to guard the pot of gold. Shakira is picking it off at the tournament field for UCLA. Now here comes Vianus outside of the foot pass. Sweet stuff for Victorine. He sets up, feeds Vianus. Vianus trying to go through Garcia. He's got a break left side. Pulled down in the box. Pulled down in the box. Are we going to get a penalty kick call? Lou Labadia, the referee, says, uh-uh. Well, it's probably going to take a little bit more than that. He's saying watch it up on the big screen. It's going to take a little bit more than that in a national semifinal, perhaps. But tremendous attacking play. Victorine, who had gotten it for Vianus, gets it back to him. Look at this quickness on the dribble. 
and there's just a slight little tug on the outside. Oh, oh uh, cleanly beat his man. Yeah. It's a bad non-call by the ref. Yeah. He cleanly beat his man, and the whole point of a penalty kick is he was deprived the opportunity to shoot for goal. Now you will see the tug on his left shoulder. He's past, he's past Garcia. Him. There's only right one reason that he's grabbing. There's only yeah. one reason that he's grabbing, and that's to prevent the chance for goal. And it was a slight little grab, but it certainly was enough to throw him completely off balance and nullify the scoring chance, and it should have been called a penalty. Seen some spotty refereeing in the national semifinal round. On we go. Panino onto the left side for Victorine. Victorine for the penalty spot. Garcia, the volley for the far side. Travis had the chance. Let it rip in tight quarters. Well, here's the difference. If you talk to both coaches, they recognize, both Yeagley and Saldana, that the attacking options for these teams are different. And what you're seeing here is a chance by Shea Travis. He's one of those attacking options just wide. The difference is Indiana's quality of attacking option is there for sure among the best attacking players in the country, Alexi Karol and Yuri Lavrenenko. But UCLA, besides Tennyson, besides Victorine, has players like Shea Travis, Sean Chikiris, who also get into the attack and break games wide open. And now, I'm pretty sure that's Karol picking up the uh, yellow card. It, it might have been Funnenberger. I, I thought it was Karol who came across. We're 22 minutes in. A lot of texture in this game already. Both teams forcing the attack. Good chances at both ends. Victorine turns the corner. Great comeback tackle by Snow, and they clear it out. And UCLA just has more attacking options overall. Indiana, a little bit of a one-trick pony. It's Lavernenko to Carroll. Not that they don't have other options. In fact, rookie. It's a heck of a pony. No, the fr yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can ride that horse. <laughs> but who's been very hot, Pat Noonan. The left midfielder for IU as of late, a freshman out of St. Louis. Noonan had the game winning goal for Indiana in their semifinal victory over Penn State. Noonan number 11 in white. And we'll keep an eye on him on the far side as you watch it. Snow turns it in toward Garcia. And now here's Noonan. Now just when you talk about a yeah, guy, it gives yeah, you a touch you put like the whammy that. on yeah. him, partner. <laughs> <laughs> but a goal and an assist in the victory over Penn State for Noonan. Chakiris, who can create stuff. Victorine lays it back. Here's Vianus. Vianus fires toward the top of the box. Tennyson's header goes wide. Attack, attack, attack. UCLA pressing Indiana hard. The Hoosiers have had their chances, too. Nobody's gotten one across the goal. UCLA and Indiana. Due to time constraints, we move further ahead in our coverage. Some outstanding defense in the first half. UCLA and Indiana both testing the goaltenders, but... Nobody coming away with any markers yet. Alongside Ty Keogh, I'm Jack Edwards. And Ty, we've seen both of the front runners get some chances. Entertaining play, good attacking soccer as well. As Indiana started off best offensively, but right away, McKinley Tennyson on a good ball opposite side from Chikiris. He gets a chance here. He lifts it over the keyboard. It just clips the top side of the crossbar. Now controversy here. UCLA in the attack. Sasha Victorine, the Missouri Athletic Club Collegiate Player of the Year to Pete Vahanis. He's in there behind everybody. Look at B.J. Stoke grabs him by the arm, spins him around. No call. Should have been a penalty kick for UCLA. An easy chance for them to go ahead. But Matt Fundenberger here from long range gets the dish from Noonan. Look at the power behind this shot as it nearly got away from Nick Romando. Let's check out the first half statistics brought to you by InternetSoccer.com. You see UCLA turning up the offensive pressure as the half went along. They have the advantage in shots by 8-4, to four, but those three early corner kicks were dangerous for the Indiana Hoosiers. UCLA probably with the better of it in midfield, but Indiana with some great chances too. We're looking forward to the last 45 of this one at the men. Players who came from the Ukraine through Rochester, New York for its attacks. Let's see how they're doing. The Ukraine Dynamos and Alexei Karol, last year's offensive MVP at the Men's College Cup. Yuri Lavrenenko, his setup man, and one of the problems for Indiana so far, they've not been getting the ball to Lavrenenko enough, particularly late in that first half. Now the 1999 net, TJ Hannig. And 120 yards from his goal. Nick Romando is in that pile right in the middle there. You see him exhorting his teammates. 
Uh, UCLA played a pretty well-tuned game in the first half. Indiana had some chances, but I'd say in the middle third of the field, which is often where games are won, the Bruins had the better of it. Well, Nick Romando in goal for UCLA, another great keeper in a great line of goalkeepers. Going back to David Vinoli, who's a goalkeeping coach now and was with the U.S. National Team, Brad Friedel, Kevin Hartman, a star with the LA Galaxy and MLS, Matt Reese was the player of the tournament probably in 97 when the UCLA Bruins won the NCAA championship. Chris Snitko also has seen a lot of action in Major League Soccer. And Romando, believe it or not, has a better career goals against average than Reese or Snitko or Hartman, who is the goalkeeper of the year in MLS. Cooper trying to make a move, and Lavrenko picks his pocket and pokes it out of bounds. So Indiana wearing the white. It's going right to left here in the second half. There will be a timeout about midway through this 45-minute stanza. Temperature dropping into the low 50s now, maybe even the high 40s, but the players just love that. Long ball for Carroll, no chance as Bocanegra picks it off. This is Lee trying to feed Victorine, but nothing doing again. Fedeski is back on Victorine. Maybe they're tag-teaming team him here, Ty. You take him for half of the half, I'll take him for the other half of the half. I think that is the matchup they want, though. They got mixed up for just a little while in the first half. Fundenberger going tumbling over an AstroTurf covering. I believe that's for the uh, football coach's intercoms there, but he keeps the ball in play. Noonan, Fundenberger with a chance left side, deep in the box. Flicked out. Well, much like the first half, Indiana starting off with some offense and getting players forward. Not a bad combination attempt. Fundenberger in there in the box. Just broken up at the last minute. Challenge along the sideline. And you could hear Snow saying it's already out. It's already out, so it should be an Indiana throw. The sidelines and all lines in soccer are planes which go indefinitely up into the sky. Fundenberger's long cross the whole ball to finish that thought the whole ball has to cross the whole line for it to be out of bounds or in the goal or what have you and if the ball crosses that plane at any time it doesn't have to land if the ball crosses that plane it is out of bounds or in the goal so ball could go into the goal in midair someone could step into the goal headed out of there and that's a goal if the whole ball's across the whole line Cooper, a hard tackle on the far side, sending it middle. Vianus lays it off. And again, UCLA looking prepared to receive the ball. All the players knowing what they want to do with it before it comes to them. Shaq, a flying header through midfield. Nice trap by Noonan to control it. But Vianus picks his pocket. Vianus straight up ahead for Victorine. Victorine lays it off for Vianus. A little choppy in the middle of the field there between the hash marks on the football field. Well, not a great pass by Victory, but you see how well he's able to receive the ball with his back to the goal. It's one of his strongest abilities. Victory laying it back for Cooper and UCLA looking very comfortable here. Patrick dropping it off for Shaq. Playing it up ahead for Futagaki. His header to get it around Snow, but Snow, big physical advantage there, turns it in for Nick Garcia. Garcia out wide for Noonan. Garcia has room and he looks right side. He goes straight up the middle for Mack. Mack for Fundenberger, the big fella, but Shaq comes over to take it away from behind. Not a bounds. It'll be a throw in for the Hoosiers. Now we get the long throw here, maybe a set play. As Indiana has a chance to fire it right across. The face of the goal. This is Ryan Mack. Sophomore from Michigan. Looking for Fundenberger short side. Lee just gets it out of there. That'll roll out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Indiana. Well, Indiana perhaps not as deep of a team as they were in 98 when they won the Mets College Cup. They missed Dima Kovalenko, Laszlo Alavanya. Through ball as Lee had a bit of a misplay, but Indiana couldn't turn it into a shot. Snow now dumps it for Lavrenenko down the right side. Cooper uses the body to interfere and keep Lavrenenko from running onto the ball. We're going to get a yellow card here. On Lavrenenko, perhaps we're pulling from behind. 
Well, it's it's not just for that particular foul. Remember, in the first half of play, Lavrenenko whistled for several fouls, a couple of them from behind. So again, it's an accumulation of fouls. It's persistent infringement, and his arms are completely around Cooper. So he, he should almost expect that, in particular, after what occurred on several plays in the first half. Sense a little bit of frustration on the part of Indiana. The Hoosiers have had some chances. Uh, we saw Fundenberger's blasts a couple of times in the first half, but certainly not the kind of skilled penetration that Indiana so often has displayed against its opponents this season. Victorine looking long for Futagaki, not quite wide enough. Well, Jack gives some credit to the UCLA defenders. Bocanegra has done an excellent job on Alexi Carroll. And Steve Shaq is tying up Fundenberger for the most part, even beating him to the high balls. And there is Shaq winning a high ball from Fundenberger. The chip from Lavrenenko all the way through. Fundenberger trying to run onto it. It's going to be a goal kick. That wouldn't have counted the offside flag up on the far side. I didn't on the see flick, it. no offside here, but on the head flick. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, Fundenberger, I think, was behind all the UCLA defenders when the ball was flicked onto him. Now Indiana winning 50-50 balls in the middle third. Jerry Yeagley telling his guys at halftime probably just to turn up the intensity a little bit. Great effort from Futagaki, but he couldn't keep it in bounds. Now Bocanegra sends it back out. Indiana will have the throw in. This is Snow. Snow who escaped being called for the penalty kick. After pulling down Pete Bahinas. A little bit too high for his target man, Noonan. Curious comes back. Shaq fires it long for Tennyson. Well, now we're seeing UCLA play a much more direct style. Long passes from the defending third toward the attacking third, but it's not working too well. And Indiana's pretty happy with the way things have turned. Lavrenenko running onto it, but Shaq takes it first. Across from the far side. Carroll trying to sell the dummy, but Lee was not buying. Chakiris coming back, lays it off for Cooper, and again, a long ball up to midfield. Victorine bumped off by Fedeschi. You're right, Jack. It was much more attractive and a lot more effective when they kept the ball on the ground, UCLA out of the back. Vianis intended for Tennyson, but on the bouncer, Indiana clears. Here comes Lavrenenko. He's got Carroll straight ahead. Now Carroll way wide right. Fundenberger going left. Lavrenenko a little bit too much muscle on it. It's a goal kick. Well, Indiana quickly moving from midfield toward the goal on the attack, getting UCLA to backpedal a little bit. They can, for Jerry Yeagley, get a little bit of diagonal movement there. They're going to get somebody open. They're going to make one of those feeds connect. They're getting their chances now, much more than they did in the first half. Victorine loses. And here comes Fedeschi. Out of the right to Lavrenenko. He's the distributor. This is Max setting up. Mack has Noonan running corner. Carroll is out at top. The lob for the far post. Romando off his line. Quickly playing it toward midfield. Victorine, the player of the year, lays it off. Futagaki in stride. His flick pass. He runs right into a Hoosier. Fedeschi now fighting for the ball. Play on, says the referee. Nice pass for Fundenberger. He misplays it. Lee picks it off. Shaq up ahead for Vianis. Vianis goes cross field for Cooper. Wonderful distribution by Nick Romando a moment ago, firing the ball on a line drive straight out to Sasha Victory to start the counterattack. Here's Chakiris, the creator. He sends it middle for Vianis. Out of the right to Lee. Futagaki setting up on the penalty spot. Lee slips down. That's a bad area of turf right there. We've seen many players go down. It rained heavily earlier today. Field there is a crown on the field, so the water tends to flow toward the wings. Santa Clara has beaten Connecticut in the other semifinal. That one went four overtimes. Couple of goals for Sean Purcell. He got the first and the last one of the game, and he finished it in four OTs. And the winner of this one gets that one. One Eastern time on ESPN Live, the Men's College Cup Championship game in Charlotte, North Carolina. We hope you'll join us. Fudeski with some good, hard work. 
That's a lot of what defense is. Now Fideski and victory just battling away this whole game in that matchup. Lee firing it for Chakiris who was protecting his legs and he gives the ball up willingly to Tarver now Lavernenko starting right side he's got Mack finds the open man Cooper coming out the challenge for UCLA Mack with a move 25 yards out chips for the far post Newton setting it up drops it down here's the shot scores Pat Newton Well, it's been going Indiana's way, and the Hoosiers were going to get their chance. What a thrill this must be for a freshman, Pat Noonan, the left midfielder. And he takes it with confidence. He brings it down on his chest despite pressure right out in front and slips the ball underneath. And it's Ryan Mack who sets him up. Look at this control composure. Now, he's not playing like a freshman. This is a guy who was cool, calm, and collected with the ball in the penalty area with a defender on and brings it down on his chest and then makes the perfect finish, driving it underneath Nick Romando. What a finisher's goal that was as well, Ty, because I thought he was going to go for the volley and he waited patiently and then picked his spot. That is poise. Lee, who gave up that turnover, firing at far post for Futagaki. He goes up, but Snow heads it wide and it goes out for a corner kick for UCLA. But Noonan has been hot as of late. When you talk to the coaching staff for the Hoosiers, they've liked what they've seen just the last few weeks. In fact, Noonan in the win against Penn State last week in the quarterfinal. The winning goal, as well as an assist on Alexi Carroll's goal. And at practice yesterday, Noonan was scoring at will, so you could tell he was hot. Noonan from Mack and Lavrenenko in the 55th minute. UCLA now having to come back. Panic playing it cleanly. Todd Saldana, we saw him there. He's going to make a couple of moves. We've got some substitutions waiting for the referee to beckon them into the game. Now, Indiana's content right now to play this kind of very aggressive midfield game, keep UCLA from settling things down. Off the kick from goal, Carroll almost has the chance. Well, that's called route one in terms of attacking soccer. Straight from the goalkeeper, T.J. Hennig, to nearly a goal at the other end. Fundenberger fires for the middle. Romando, the master of the box. Well, Romando stopped a penalty kick at Virginia in the quarterfinal when it was still 1-0 for UCLA. And that may have decided the game and, and brought the Bruins here to the men's College Cup semifinals. Here's Cooper with a ton of room left side. Mack going out to challenge him. Cooper fires it, but Mack blocks it. Mack trying to go over the top to win the ball. Cooper volleys it into the middle. And Swan whacks it toward midfield. Panino couldn't decide who was going to take it. Boganegra gets it to him. Panino turns and fires up the wing. There's Swan and Tennyson. That battle continues. Tennyson wins the ball. Swan wins it right back. Tennyson pulls him over. Play on. Now look at these guys going after each other. A little bit of nastiness there. And the referee Lou Labadia. Those are two guys. Two guys that played against each other even in their pre-teen years. <laughs> right there, John Swan against McKinley Tennyson. That's the matchup. Swan slipping almost out of the play. Puts his arm on Tennyson. Tennyson piles right back in. This. Folks, has been going on for the better part of 15 years, I think. Lee on the right side getting a challenge. Furugaki. Lee on the overlap. Trying to atone. Hard tackle, and Tarver knocks it out of bounds. We're going to get substitutions. We'll catch up to those and for Matt Fundenberger for Indiana. And as we await the uh, UCLA throw, we'll tell you that Shea Travis is into the game along with Martin Bruno. Our first look at Bruno, number eight in blue. Nine assists. He's third on the team in scoring. So this is a guy who's got a lot of punch. 
Well, Tyler Hawley coming on for Fundenberger. That's a defensive move for Indiana. They have the lead, and that really leaves Alexi Carroll up front as the lone forward for the Hoosiers. Hawley, much more defensive-minded player than the player he replaced, Fundenberger. Tennyson is out. Centering pass, and Garcia fires it out of there. Cooper down low, intended for Travis, who's back in. About 15 minutes gone here in the second half. Indiana has broken on top. On the goal by Noonan. Victorine laying it off. Chakiris, tough moves in traffic, and he's not going to take on that second tackler. That was Fideski breaking it up. Ah, here comes Livernenko. Bringing it left side for Noonan. Noonan going to work on Lee with Livernenko, and Lee tackles it away. Hawley bashes into Lee, and that might earn him a little bit of yellow. Now, nah, just a good talking to. Hawley brought in here exactly for this reason, just to bust things up before UCLA can establish that quick passing game through midfield to set up their attack. Travis on the far side. Travis working against Swan. Has the shot if he wants it. Didn't get what he wanted on it. As you see the ball spinning all the way across the field and out of bounds. Alongside Ty Keogh, I'm Jack Edwards, UCLA, wearing the blue, Indiana in white. We're at Charlotte, North Carolina, and this is the national semifinal. Got less than 30 minutes to go in this one. UCLA trying to come up with the equalizer against Indiana. Pat Noonan's goal in the 55th minute, the only marker of the night. And there he is. Noonan showing great composure to settle the ball, pick his spot, and then bury it. Mack drops it back. Garcia with a 60-yarder for Carroll. Bocanegra on the challenge, but Carroll, a good little move to interfere with Bocanegra on the way up. Now he bumped him, but he did it in a way that disguised it from the referee. And just enough contact at just the right time that he knew he was going to be able to get away with it unless Bocanegra just took a face plant. Here's Noonan, the goal scorer. Carroll setting up as his target. There is Carroll, a little one-two, but Noonan couldn't quite run onto it. It was a hard serve. Carroll throws down Lee, and it'll be a free kick for UCLA. Shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> shoulder and elbow and forearm and hand. Hey, he's, only a, shoulder. he's only a freshman, but uh, he's, he's showing a little savvy there in his gamesmanship <laughs> trying to convince the referee. I, I don't think he's, to, he's not going to buy it, I don't trying think. Trying to get the next call, yeah. yeah. Shoulder to shoulder. Well, that was a good effort anyway. you got to give it to him for the argument. Shakira is settling in midfield for UCLA. They always talk about how difficult it is to repeat in any sport, but Indiana University, the 98 champions on top here. Cooper with a long run left side into the middle. Tarber cleaning things out. Panino trying to settle it, but back comes Holly with a little bit of a break. Shaq comes over. And Ramondo has it. 50-50 ball. Who wants this one? Indiana's on it. The Hoosiers getting up over the Bruins in midfield consistently here in the second half. They have the lead to show for it. Mack working against Lee. Fires it far side, way beyond anybody. Cooper elects not to track it down. It'll be a goal kick UCLA. No shots yet for UCLA after playing so smoothly in the first half. No shots in the second half. They had eight offerings in the first. Again, a 50-50 ball. This one jumping in from behind as Victorine had position. But even with the position, you see the Indiana players making the airborne challenge. That's just pure effort. It, it, you know, it, there's no fine strategy to winning a 50-50 ball. It's what's in your gut. Well, and when you're defending a lead, it gives you something to fight for, and that's what Indiana has right now. Holly running into trouble and drawing the foul, and Indiana puts it back in play quickly. Carroll looking for it. Shaq heads it sideways. And here comes Lee to try to keep it in bounds. He does and turns it up. Here's Snow. Out of the far side to Mack. Mack going one on three. Hey, Indiana can draw this back. It's got the lead. 
Swan going up the wing. Cooper firing it. Victorine a little late coming out of the ball. These forwards from UCLA are being forced to come back into their half of the field to receive those outlet passes from their midfielders. And they're not able to force the attack the way they were in the first half. Indiana playing very aggressive ball and disrupting UCLA's great flow. Give credit to the Hoosiers for that. Mack chipping far side for Carroll. Lee heads it back toward the middle. Ramondo is there. Well, some confidence now in the Indiana game. Even Nick Garcia, their sweeper, getting into the attack on that last movement by Indiana forward. Vian is trying to beat too many men. Can't get past Tauber. And Tauber's on the go here. Running away from Panino. Bocanegra coming out. Centering pass. Panino back. Sliding diagonally to pick that off. Hard run from behind by Swan. They say play on. Shakuris drops it off. Vianus straight up the field for Shakuris. Vianus onto the right for Lee. Thigh trap drops it right to his foot. First touch was a good one. Victorine getting the bump from Fideski. And it'll be a free kick for UCLA. A chance to reset. Indiana gets the D back. Good aggressiveness there by Fideski. He's step for step there with Victory, and he gets called for the foul, but he sends the message to Victory that you're not going to get any space to work in whatsoever. And that's been the difference here in the second half for Indiana. They really clamped down and battled harder at midfield, not letting UCLA get that sort of flow to their play that they had through much of the first half. Let's take a look at Shakiris' plant foot and see if he slips here on the sideline. Footing's been a little shaky right where he is. Not really what he wanted. Cooper puts it up for grabs. Great challenge in the box. Bruno going hard for the ball. He really had not much to work with as that ball was fading away from him right into Hannig's hands. But Hustle almost set up a goal for UCLA there. Shaq in the back. It's Lee. Chakuris. Shaq. Fakes the square pass and runs into the space. Chakuris. That's Bruno who had the chance. Snow in traffic. Pass Tauber and Fideski just blasted 50 yards downfield. Indiana doesn't want to get into a shell here. If you let UCLA attack, it will, and it will find an open spot. And there's 23 minutes to go in this one. Plenty of time. Shaq going long up the middle for Victorine. Fedeski runs him off it and heads it clear. But again, here's the middle third of the field where it's beginning to change. The momentum is beginning to swing back toward the Bruins. Fedeski and Victorine. Well, something that might kill the momentum for the Bruins is the break here in the second, midway through the second half. And that will play into Indiana's plan where they can reorganize, get their oxygen back in, and get ready to defend this lead for the final quarter of the game. It basically does split the game into four quarters. We'll see if Indiana can win back the momentum that UCLA seems to be turning its way. It's 1-0 for the Hoosiers. Well, semi-final game. And if Jerry Yeagley's guys look comfortable with a 1-0 lead, well, consider that they haven't given up a goal in 428 minutes and 44 seconds. No goals allowed in NCAA tournament play this year, outscoring their four opponents 7 to 0 so far. Long throw down the sideline intended for Hawley. It deflects out of bounds, and it'll be a UCLA throw as Hawley went up for the challenge. And Indiana did adjust. Their team plan coming out in the second half. They put on a lot more pressure at midfield, not allowing UCLA to get that possession, which sets up most of their attacks. Here's Noonan, the goal scorer, working against Shaq. Makes the nice draw move, but you can't beat the second man. So many times, if you beat that first man and try to take on the second, the second one takes it away. Todd Saldana trying a few X's and O's, bouncing them off his staff, seeing what's going to stick. Todd Saldana on the left. Steve Rammel, former MLS player, on the right. Here's Max long throw into the six-yard box. Still loose. Hawley with a challenge. Oh, Carroll almost had a golden opportunity. 
finally Travis clears but not past the perimeter. Now Ramondo controls. Now we saw UCLA with such great flow in the last two or three minutes before the mandatory timeout about midway through the second half. Now let's see if the Bruins can recapture that or if Indiana continues to win those 50-50 balls and disrupt in midfield. The more it bounces around like that, the more it favors the aggressive and very physical Indiana Hoosiers. That's how they win championships, combining that great desire and those physical attributes with their ability to put it on the ground and make those quick passes and get the scoring opportunities. Again, players slipping down. That's Bruno who lost his footing in that slippery portion of the field. Bocanegra plays it back to Romando. And it's obvious that that break gave Indiana the opportunity to reorganize and really set up their defense to defend this lead for the last 20 minutes. Hawley going to work against Cooper. It's out of bounds, and it'll be an Indiana throw. Hawley doesn't play a lot of pretty soccer, but, man, does he bother UCLA's back line. It's always rough and tumble when number 17 in white is out there, but... He's getting UCLA a little bit off its game. And as you said, that's why he's in there. Terrific disruptive force. Shaq clears it out. But again, it only goes to the perimeter. Hawley on the challenge, but Cooper's there first. 50-50 ball at midfield. Once again, it's Indiana coming down with the ball. Noonan turns and fires. Shaq pops it back up the midfield. Another 50-50 ball and another Indiana head on it. Labrinenko lobs it in, right wing side. Corral can't run onto it. It'll be a goal kick UCLA. McKinley Tennyson right behind Todd Saldana. That's Dave Vinoli on the right with the white head on. Goalkeeper coach for UCLA. Tennyson getting ready to check back into the game. According to word we get from the sideline, he'll be going in for Cooper. So that means a shift in formation as a backliner comes out and a forward goes in. So with about 19 minutes to go in this one, UCLA beginning to take the chance. Here's Snow. He's in a race with Lee. Lee, good recovery, tackles the ball and wins it away. Chakiris distributes. Vianus, Vianus quickly for Victorine, one, two, Vianus, great tackle from behind, Fideski goes in, goes in hard again against Travis and it goes out of bounds. Tennyson is into the game and Cooper out, so UCLA beginning to make the moves to run forward, take the chances, exposing the back a little bit more, but you have to, you got to try to get something here. Victorine off Fedeski, and that's like trying to shoot it through a brick wall. Well, Jerry Yagley's Indiana team's always known for their tremendous heart, and right there on your screen, Dennis Fedeski, he epitomizes that battling spirit. Indiana battling to hold on here to a narrow 1-0 lead, and you see more and more attacking-minded players coming onto the field for UCLA. Futagaki replacing Panino. Here's a head on to the spot. Travis with a chance, the shot goes wide. And it's a corner kick on the deflection off Indiana. Well, this is that defensive shell that you talked about earlier, Jack. You don't want to start it too soon. UCLA has just too many attacking options. One of them comes from the long throw here. It's flicked on very well. It's a loose ball in the box. Tennyson frees it up to Shea Travis. And Tyler Hawley made the block, may have saved a goal. To the far post. Panic punching it clear. Vianus lobs it right back in there. Victorine going up for it. Loose in the middle. Hannig had the right away. Victorine is down and in pain. Might have had the wind knocked out of him. Well, Victorine is the player for UCLA to put the contact on the Indiana goalkeeper, TJ Hannig. You see the green paint on Victorine's face. Literally taking a face plant here. They tried to paint over the football field, but with the rain, you can see the marks anyway. There goes Victorine. He puts the arm up into T.J. Hannigan. and that's why the call was made. But he, he did. He got the worst of it in terms of the landing, though. 
Yeah. Uh, UCLA staff not liking the call, but it was the right call. Now Vianis taken down from behind. It'll be a free kick for UCLA, 30 yards out. Relatively straight on. It's just wide of the right post as UCLA looks at it. Now the referee moving it back to 33 yards away. We can spot it precisely because of the gridiron. The goal line is on the end line of the football field. And this from the 23-yard line, if you will. Shakiris is going to have a long run out of this one. This would have to be a perfect shot to beat a goalie as good as Hannock from this range. He's going to try it over the top. Shakiris, a lot of confidence in that left foot. And he doesn't miss this one by much. Look at the concentration. He labels it. It gets around the wall. Now it's supposed to start curving as well as dipping. Not enough dip there at the end. Now they didn't like it. They know that the clock now is starting to work against the UCLA Bruins. You see it in the upper left-hand corner. 15, 20 to go. Here's Carroll looking for insurance to put the spike in the coffin. A collision and an easy finish. Lavernenko makes it 2-0 Indiana. Uh, UCLA had to expose the back. And there was no one picking up Lavernenko, making the long run through from midfield. It was a full field attack by the Hoosiers. Nick Romando, the UCLA goalkeeper, colliding with one of his own defenders. The ball headed over the top of the UCLA defense as they push up. Alexi Carroll here is the one that controls it, splits the two UCLA defenders. Tyler Hawley gets a foot to it, and it's an easy put away for Yuri Lavrenenko. But it's Alexi Carroll's vision that started it, the splitting pass into Tyler Hawley, and then the unfortunate collision by the goalkeeper, Romando, with his own player. Shakiris going baseline, trying to get around Noonan, and it's a corner kick, UCLA. Now, they've waved it off. It's going to be a goal kick. They've got to give credit to Chikiris for walking toward the corner with it. Lavrenenko from Carroll and Hawley. And that comes in the 75th minute to give Indiana a 2-0 lead on UCLA. Well, it was the Ukraine connection from Carroll to Lavrenenko by way of T.J. Hawley. For the gaki way Tyler. up to win the 50-50. Tyler Hawley. Now, Indiana turned the game its way early in the second half when it started winning everything in midfield, winning every 50-50 ball, playing physically, just getting the advantage on UCLA, depriving the Bruins of the kind of flow that they need to be successful in the middle third of the field. And now with a 2-0 lead and less than 15 minutes to go, this would be one of the all-time comebacks if UCLA could come back and beat Indiana. Here's a swing pass into the middle. Headed down and out, and Indiana player just went face first right into the goal mouth. Snow really took a pounding there. I think he's got a little whiplash. He slammed his head. Yeah, he's feeling a little queasy. Not steady on his feet. You see this, he's racing at the near post just to beat the attacking player there. He wins the head ball, but then is piled into. And boy, oh. his head hit the ground. Oh. I tell you, he's lucky it rained today because he'd be hurting about three times as much. The ground was hard. On this same field, Carolina Panthers wear helmets. But that was as hard a hit with the turf as you're going to see. He was running absolutely all out full speed, launched himself horizontally. And even though he tried to brace himself with his arms, it's just so much he can do to stop your body. Gravity wins. Well, in from the right side. Good defensive header. His momentum, though, as he's helped by the UCLA player to the turf, his head actually bounces off the turf. And, and where there's paint in there in that end zone, I walked the field before the game. It's a little bit harder surface yeah. than it is in the rest of the field because of because of the paint that has accumulated there over the course of the NFL season. Yeah, it's a little scratchy. Well, they've taken a good close look at him here, and you can see the paint on his face. 
Jerry Yeagley trying to calm his guys down and get their minds on the game. Oh boy, this is this is a gamer here. Fundenberger is going to come in for Snow. I don't think they're going to take any chances. No, here. and you shouldn't. No, nope. any time it's a head injury. UCLA in the huddle, and this makes you think of '97, when Indiana was the more highly touted team, and here. UCLA is probably the most highly touted team. All those players with international experience for the U.S. Pan American team where they won a bronze medal this past summer. Several players also playing with the U-20 national team for the United States and Nigeria this past spring. Well, that's that's a nice sight, isn't it? <laughs> he is a gamer. Well, yeah, green paint is now part of the uniform for B.J. Snow. He says, give me a towel. I'm going back in. Uh, he's a senior. This is his last chance. And, and he remembers 97 when UCLA upset Indiana in the semifinal. Tables are turned here. Well, these guys have the rings from last year, and they are playing like champions tonight. Chakiris into the box, the challenge. It's in! It's in! It's 2-1! Oh, we got a fight down here! Victorine going into the goal. The referee has got to take control of the match right here. I think it was Carlos Bocanegra who got his head to the ball and finally put it into the net. A well, UCLA has gotten one back and there's about 13 and a half minutes to go. Corner kick an in-swinger from Chikiris. It's deflected once and then hammered in at the back post. It could be Shaq. Yep. Steve Shaq. That's who it is. Steve Shaq on the score. He cuts the lead in half. And there's a handball on the goal line by Nick Garcia, but the ball carried into the net anyway, so they play the advantage. And that's exactly the situation we were talking about with the ball not touching the ground, but it had crossed the plane. And as soon as that whole ball crossed the whole line, it's in there. And now UCLA is going to go full throttle trying to pull this thing off. Uh oh, big chance in the back, and Carroll gets it loose. Fundenberger gives the body slam to Ramondo. <laughs> That's the pile driver coming down. You think WWF is good? Fundenberger lands on you. You're going to have bruises for a week. Fundenberger just turning and firing it toward the middle. Nearly a fatal misplay by Ramondo. Well, what texture this game has now. Tennyson trying a little move to try to get loose, and we got a handball called against Swan. Chance to set it up from about 31 yards away for Chakiris. Chakiris picked the ball up and gave it a little kiss. Look at that matchup. John Swan, number four for Indiana. McKinley Tennyson. These guys played against each other since they were three teens. Back in Indiana. Will Chakiris let it rip or does he chip it to the far post? Tennyson setting up. Here is the chip. McKinley Tennyson attempting the diving header. <laughs> he launched himself early, didn't he? That was like a suicide attempt. Hannock playing a great game. He had come off his line to anticipate that. Big hit. Carroll mixing it up in midfield along with Futagaki. This, but look at the diving header. <laughs> he didn't even come close to it, but he was trying to launch his body in the direction of the ball as it was hit. Tennyson, you got to give him an A for effort. 11 and a half minutes to go. UCLA desperately trying to get the goal that ties it up. Indiana had that shutout streak, which had lasted the length of the NCAA tournament. And UCLA finally has cracked the ice. Here's Futagaki tries the touch pass off. Fedeski intercepts. Back come the Hoosiers. Lavrinenko sending it up the field. Ramondo controlling and saying, push up, let's go. 50-50 ball. And again, it's Tauber of Indiana winning it. And Noonan just belts it down the field. 11 minutes to go, pretty early to go into the shell for Indiana. You don't want UCLA to get another chance. And now lots of diagonal movement from the Bruins. Tennyson getting tackled hard from behind. Swan's effort forcing the ball out of bounds. It'll be a throw for UCLA. And Tennyson is slow getting up. 
There is Swan. Hard scrabble defender. Shaq, right side, a lofting ball. Having checked into the game, that's Thompson, another offensive player. Tennyson is down on the far side. UCLA, with the advantage, wants to play on. Here's Thompson into the middle. Victorine in a lot of traffic past Futagaki. Victorine hustling for the sideline, but it's out of bounds. Ten minutes to go in regulation time, and there is Tennyson. He might have taken a shot to the back of the leg. Holding his left knee. Tennyson actually was the first player to get his head to the ball on the goal scoring play by UCLA to cut Indiana's lead in half. It was the Chakiris corner kick. Tennyson got a piece of it and it dropped in to Steve Shack. And there's the clip from behind. Pretty dangerous challenge there by John Swan. It's always dangerous for the attacking player to get clipped as he's turning. As Tennyson gets helped off the field, guess who's back? B.J. Snow wiped most of the paint off his face. He took that flying face plant right in the Indiana goal mouth, and there is no way that this senior is going to miss the last 10 minutes of this game, especially with his team now only up by one. Carroll with the high foot, but they let it go. Lavernenko bringing it up against Shaq, who has the goal for UCLA. Three UCLA players back. Futagaki coming flying through to get the yellow card. Lavernenko very slow getting up. Adam Cooper was the replacement for Tennyson. Well, a quick tackle by Futagaki, but it was from behind. Lavernenko had turned away towards the sideline. And he goes over the top of the ball, so the correct call, in fact. Futagaki coming in late, kind of goes over the top of the ball to catch Lavernenko's ankles. Lavernenko looking middle, has Hawley. Shaq pops it up, Lee after it. Tauber settling it. This is Snow, who had the head injury. Pops it off, and it'll go for a corner kick for Indiana. Nine and a half minutes to go in regulation time, and the Hoosiers leisurely getting into position for the corner kick. Todd Saldana watching the clock tick so quickly. When you're down a goal, time just seems to fly away. Lavrenenko making sure everything's just right, in no hurry. Shaq heads it clear. Tauber with the lob, Carroll out to Lavrenenko, makes the turn, closes, fires, bad angle, and Ramondo the save. Off the punt, the 50-50 ball, Victorine coming back, but off the deflection, Hawley has it. Victorine all the way back in the defensive third, off for Lee, Lee ahead for Thompson, he misplays it out of bounds. Eight and a half minutes to go in the game for Todd Saldana's UCLA Bruins. UCLA 19 and 2 on the year. Indiana 19 and 3. The Hoosiers the higher seed. Here's Cooper. Back for Ramondo. Here's, Here's a guy. Victorine. Yeah, he's not about to quit. Things are stacked against him. But we've seen just on the last three or four plays. Sasha Victorine playing with every last ounce of effort that he's got in his body. Travis, long ball for Victorine. Touch into the middle, but nobody running onto it now. Here's a chance for Futagaki. Blocked. Victorine, the chip to the far post. The header by Dawson scores! UCLA has tied it up! Well, some never-say-die effort pays off for the UCLA Bruins. We talked about Sasha Victorine leading by example. He has that captain's armband. And it's Scott Thompson finishing it off. And a good attempt here 
by Futagaki, but it's blocked out in front. A fortunate rebound. Victorine then bends it towards the back post. And a nice finish on the header at the back post by Scott Thompson, a freshman. <laughs> Saldana happy with the goal, but the work is just beginning. Seven and a half minutes to go regulation time. You know, uh, this may sound like a complete oversimplification, but I think, to me, it is as simple as someone like Victorine coming all the way back into the defensive third to win a 50-50 ball. It, you know, you, you can talk strategy and skills and all the fine points as long as you want. So often in championships, it comes down to hustle and effort. That's what's going to decide this one eventually. What a classic we've got here. Indiana and UCLA. Heavyweights in the College Cup. And we've seen grit exhibited by both teams. That's how Indiana got on top with a lot of grit at midfield. And UCLA fought their way back into this. And, and Sasha Victorine is the guy that set the tone, like you said, coming back on several plays to win balls at midfield and then setting up the tying goal with a tremendous cross. Taikyo, I got to tell you, I, as a fan, here's a chance for Travis Snow. Travis the challenge. They both go down. It's still loose. Thompson far side to keep it alive. Every challenge for the ball. A tough confrontation right now. Lavernenko sending it ahead for Hawley. Garcia on a long run up the right wing. Hawley getting knocked off the ball. Shaq, Victorine the target. Flicks it over onto the left side. Travis, Victorine going to the penalty spot as the target man. Travis looked like it could have been a handball. Volley into the middle. Fedeski with a big header to clear for Indiana. Well, you As see a soccer here. fan, I can't even decide which team I want to see in the final. What a tremendous heavyweight battle this is. Center ball for Victorine. Great play. And <laughs> coming over the top of the player of the year to punch it free. The momentum shifts. A team comes from behind after being down by two goals. And you got to think that UCLA will try and snatch it. But sometimes a team has invested so much emotional and physical energy to just tie the game, maybe they don't have enough left to actually go on and win it, in which case the Indiana Hoosiers could steal one going the other way. Here's Carroll. Carroll working against Bocanegra. That's been a great matchup throughout the game. Here's Hannick. Well off of his line. Comes out into the crowd again. Look at the commitment by Hannick. Once he made the decision, you knew no matter what was in his way, he was going to get his fists to that ball. It's all or nothing for goalies, and he got it all. All right, here's the long throw for Indiana. Looking for the clincher. Indiana had not given up a goal in the NCAA tournament. The defending champions have given up two here. Tauber working for the shot. Into the middle. Lavernenko heading in for the post. Ramondo has it. Well, Nick Ramondo in goal for UCLA. Not as tall as T.J. Hannock, but very acrobatic. Jerry Yegley thinks that Indiana had the advantage going into this on the goalkeeper. Big numbers here. Vianis for Victorine toward the corner. Fedeski over there to mark him. Chakaris right onto the face of the goal. And again, Hannock controls. Four minutes to go. Lee settles. Nice move to get around one. Now he chips for the middle. Nobody there. Fedeski heading it clear to Lavernenko. Gives it away on the one touch. Thompson fiddling on the right side. Behind us. Quick shot. Futagaki wanted to turn and chance to take it. Now that's a forwards move, though. You got to take advantage, even if it's a small opening. All right, almost a fatal giveaway by one of the most experienced and skillful players on the Indiana team. Lavrenenko had given up possession to Thompson. Thompson then got it to Vianis. Futagaki with a quick release on the left foot, just slightly off balance as he spun around. Phil Presser is into the game for B.J. Snow, who clearly is subpar since returning to the game after suffering a massive blow to the head. It was Snow who went down hard, face first in the goal mouth, about midway through this second half. We've now got three minutes to go in regulation. Indiana and UCLA, 2-2 in the national semis in a classic. 
Lavrinenko trying to run onto it. Touches it ahead for Noonan. Ramondo out to control the area. Loses it. Noonan for the goal. Misses. Oh! Palpitations of the heart. Ramondo, I don't know if it's a heart attack or whether he actually... <laughs> whether he actually was hit on the initial save. Yeah, he got clipped a little bit by Noonan on the first save, but he stayed up anyway. <laughs> Noonan had a chance to put this game away. Timeout, the trainer on the field. Let's take another look. A uh, nice little pass in behind. Very aggressive goalkeeping. Could have saved the game right there, but then perhaps because he was clipped a little bit by Noonan, he was a little bit off, and Noonan tries to bend it. Bend it in. Now, Noonan's a left-footed player, so you give him a little bit of an excuse for not being able to hit at least a partially empty net. Look at Possible Noonan. angle. He's still almost buried. It was a gift, and he puts a nice little bend on it. But he, he likes the left foot, I think, a little more than the right. Here's Todd Saldana saying, what the heck is going on here? <laughs> I'll tell you what, on the ball, Noonan misses that by about a quarter of an inch. You see Ramondo getting patched up. Well, this has just been toe-to-toe, -to -toe, ding dong battle. 0-0 zero, zero at the half. Noonan, Lavrinenko, Shaq, and Thompson, and it's 2-2. Two -two. Well, when you're a goalkeeper, you have to be courageous. He gets the ball, and then the right foot, actually the, the back heel, the back, the heel of the left foot of Noonan clips him just over the eye. And that's part of the reason he misplays this. He's he's feeling the hit. And when he goes to collect the ball, he's not concentrating as much as he should. He let it loose. And Noonan almost put it into the empty net. Ramondo is coming out. And I'm wondering if we're going to see Kevin Peralt coming in or if they're just going to put a butterfly on it or patch him up on the sideline and let him stay in the game. This is the one exception, a goalkeeper. If this is where a field player, they've stopped play for him. He has to leave the field. But with a goalkeeper, they will let him re-enter. Here you see Kevin Peralt. He's a big fella, 6'4". But man, what a tough spot to have to come into. I mean, can you imagine? Here you are in the 88th minute of the national semifinals. Peralt looked pretty sharp in practice yesterday, and he, he's able to get to more high balls, actually, than Romando can with that six foot four range. But it's a cool evening. He's been sitting on the bench for two hours, hasn't had the benefit of a warm up or even a stretch. He's yeah. barking out his well, encouragement. It looks as if yeah. Romando's going to stay in the game. As long as they can stop the bleeding, Romando's back in. You can't let a player continue to play if there's still blood. We have seen blood on both sides. <laughs> that looks like a happy smile. You know, I'm sure that Peralt's going to get his share of great action in his college career. But in the 88th minute of the national semis, tied 2-2 with Indiana, not sure if I'd like to go into a game cold. Victorine wins another 50-50 ball, trying to get it ahead to Thompson. Swan knocks it out of bounds. You got the boxer and the puncher here. You got Indiana playing the great physical game. UCLA playing the entertaining shorter game. Can't pick between the two. Like asking a parent, who's your favorite child? Two outstanding college soccer teams here. Lavrinenko outside of the foot pass. Target man, Corral. Right side, the drive deflected out. Mack had the chance on the run from midfield. Well, a strong defensive play by both teams, too. It was Boca Negra there coming across to get a block on that last chance for Indiana. Final one and a half minutes of regulation time, and Lavrinenko teeing it up for the corner kick for Indiana. A lot of big targets. The Hoosiers win a lot of balls in the air. That's Victorine, the forward, coming back to win the ball just outside the six-yard box. Corral going to work against Cooper. Cooper knocks it out. It'll be another corner kick for Indiana. It'll be less than a minute by the time Lavrinenko takes this one. It's virtual sudden death now. Into the box. UCLA all over it. And just belting it out. We can play as many as four 15-minute sudden death overtimes. Big effort by Bocanegra coming way up from the defense. 40 seconds to go regulation time. There's Bocanegra who usually patrols the back 
A tremendous athletic ability. He just about sprinted past two IU defenders at once there. Swan, the long throw in, straight up the sideline. Shaq, who scored the first one for UCLA, fires it long for Victorine. Victorine fighting through against Swan. 15 seconds to go in regulation time. Victorine looking for the throw in, not getting the call. It's an Indiana ball. We're going to sudden death. It's 2 2 UCLA and Indiana after 90 minutes in the national semifinals. There's the man who tied it up, Scott Thompson, UCLA and in Indiana. Privileged to be alongside Ty Keo. I'm Jack Edwards. Ty, we have seen a classic between UCLA and Indiana. And there goes Steve Shack. Shea Travis about to end this game with his dribbling skill. He cuts back, crosses for UCLA. Pierce, who just came on as a sub, gets his head to it. Maybe a half of a fingernail by T.J. Hennig, but the post saves the day for Indiana. Vianus back to Ramondo. Next goal wins. Here's a challenge. No slip-ups allowed in OT. Victorine charging in on Mack. But Mack controls for Indiana. Out of the right to Noonan. He has Carroll setting up at the penalty spot. Tries to volley it through Cooper. It pops up. Chakiris settles it. He's got Travis left. Comes right up the middle for Bruno. Bruno the quick turn. Travis on the fly left side. Chakiris short ball. Bruno. Bruno against Swan's challenge. Victorine. Chakiris. The short game in Indiana takes so much effort to stay in front of these men to mark them. Victorine's pass comes through Hawley. Garcia lets it roll over the end line. It looked as if Indiana was home free. 15 minutes to go, up two goals as Noonan and Labrinenko hit the back of the net. But Shaq brought UCLA back alive. And then Thompson on the assist from Victorine. And UCLA did the near impossible to come back against the best team on defense in the NCAA tournament, which Indiana is, and send this thing to sudden death. Four minutes to go, third overtime period. 50-yard throw in. Garcia calm, Swan settles, Victorine intercepts. Presser hustling back, gives it away to Lee. Vianus outside of the foot, Chakiris. Bocanegra has Cooper with a ton of space here. Cooper settles. Taking on Tauber. Cooper still on the go. Misfires, it's a goal kick for Indiana. Right now it's a battle of attrition. Already for UCLA, they do not have the services of McKinley Tennyson. Left the game with an injury after being tackled from behind by John Swan. It looks like Yuri Lavrenenko might be done for the game with Cramps, the playmaker for Indiana. So you really look to your bench and see if there's someone you could find who could make a difference at this late stage. Shaq is out and Thompson in. Thompson now playing on the back line for UCLA. Carroll. Has Noonan in the middle. Fires it to the middle. Bocanegra there. Bocanegra is one fit player. He has done a lot of running tonight. He's stretching after every stoppage of play here. There's Lavrenenko. And earlier tonight, I speculated that Santa Clara might have a tough time coming back on short turnaround to play in the championship game on Sunday. <laughs> I take that back. If anybody still can run, that should be a tremendous battle. It'll be hard to top this one, though. Well, at this point, the advantage is with Santa Clara because they've had more rest since their game ended sooner. An extra three hours of rest, and that's going to make a difference. Victorine, Travis with Hawley on his back, fires it out of bounds, and again, beyond the football sidelines, it's quite slick here. Futagaki going down. There's Shaq on the right. 
And Tennyson on the left. Both physically unable to continue. Tennyson with the injury. Shaq cramping and carried off. Vianus has Victorine left side. Tries to thread the needle. Uh-uh. Mack back. Bringing it up. This is Noonan. Noonan has Carroll patrolling the middle. Cooper back to check him. Now he gets right around Bocanegra. Noonan with the move. Mack a little touch far side. Chip into the middle beyond Carroll. Snow, who had a big head injury in this game, making the long run. Noonan keeps it alive. Hawley at the corner. Fires right to the top. Max drive, save! Ramondo saves the game! And Mack immediately goes into cramp. Final minute of play in the third overtime period. Well, some real deception on the dribble by Pat Noonan setting up that attack for Ryan Mack, but Ramondo so sharp, so quick to his right. I thought the ball was past him. Chakiris, quick work. Bruno down the wing. Swan, so solid at right back. Hawley clocking it up the field. Bocanegra. Indiana just looking for one misplay by the UCLA defense. Cooper, Victorine, up the line, Travis. He has Bruno middle. Futagaki, far side. Long shot by Travis, a little hopeful it was going wide. Final seconds of the third overtime tick off. We are going to the ultimate overtime, the fourth. Next goal wins in the national semis. It's between us and penalty kicks. UCLA and Indiana in a 2-2 deadlock. This has been one of the greatest college soccer games ever played. Sasha Victorine, one of 61 players we've seen in these two semifinal matches. Remember, regulation match goes 90 minutes, so we've played more than the equivalent of three games seven and a half hours of real time. Here's Victorine as UCLA goes left to right. If nobody scores in this 15 minute period, they'll go to penalty kicks. And what an anti-climax that would be. It would advance one of these two teams. But this one deserves to end on an earned goal. Futagaki laying it off for Vahenis. A lot of turnovers in the middle third of the field. Vianus now trying to settle it. Looking ahead for Victorine. Challenge from behind. They both go down. Travis picks it up. Check that. It's Chakiris. Thompson, who has a goal tonight, going in this direction. Chakiris up the wing for Bruno. Swan takes it away. I chuckle because Swan has just been as solid as a rock on that back line. Cooper on the run to the middle to Vianus. Travis on the far side. Cooper, it's so hard to run on defense at this point for Indiana. UCLA looking for an opening. Bruno with the turn, sending it ahead. Shakiris, he missed the open goal. Well, the 1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two passing, that short touch passing that was forcing Indiana to break down defensively. It's so hard to run and cover men at this stage of a game. UCLA putting on a passing clinic to set up this chance. And the through ball, Shakir likes his left foot. He bends it past Hennig. But T.J. Hennig cut the angle pretty well. And he was already at a bad angle, Shakir. But what about the approach play? Indy, Indiana could not stay with, what was it, eight or nine passes consecutively for UCLA as they brought the ball forward. Bocanegra, 40-yard volley. Presser tracks it down, and he fires it back upfield. The long ball, Carroll laying it off. Mack, left side. What a perfect finish it would be for Snow, who went out with a head injury. Thompson wins it from him. It'll be a throw-in for Indiana. The Hoosiers push everybody up, walking up the field. 
You're not going to believe this, but Lavernica wants back in this game. He has left twice with cramps. Back from the dead. Ramondo saved UCLA's bacon in the previous OT. Tremendous save on Max Blast. Here comes Lavernenko for B.J. Snow. Back to take the corner. Lavernenko usually does, but he has cramped so many times. It's Max duty now. Ramondo on his goal line. To the far post. Loose in front. Travis traps with the shoulder and clears it out. There's Swan, the only man among field players in his half. Hawley, Cooper on the challenge, out of bounds. Throw in for UCLA. Indiana fans don't like it. Shakiris. Fianus. Here comes the short passing game again. Fianus looking upfield. Travis. Comes upfield. Hawley hustling back to clear. Very impressive. Again, tight dribbling and passing control through midfield by UCLA. Victorine. Hawley. A fatigue error there. Volleying it off the side of the foot. Cooper, long ball for Travis. Has Bruno. Fires the middle for Futagaki. Loose in front. Fadeski blasts it clear. Bocanegra settles. Thompson. Thompson entered the game in the second half. He's pretty fresh. Going against Presser. Makes the one-on-one -on -one move, leaving his back line. Chakiris to Vianis. Victorine, player of the year, walking in, taken down. No way you're going to get that kind of call at this juncture. In sudden death overtime, you would have to be completely undressed in front of the goal with no one between you and the goal. But it is the second time in this match when a UCLA, UCLA player was taken down in the box. Travis right away for Garcia. <laughs> Rather, Garcia intercepting for Indiana. The adrenal glands are used up. Vianis leaves it off. Chakiris long chip. Travis has Bruno at the top of the box. Moving on, Swan. Travis, the long cross. Hannock makes the save. Bruno the challenge, but Hannock hangs on. And Bruno cramps up. A lot of danger coming on almost every attack from that far side in the left cor corner. Shea Travis, so skillful on the dribble. There's Travis getting past Swan, his defender, getting the cross in a little bit too close to T.J. Hannig, who's been very aggressive off of his line. Bruno very aggressive in challenging him, probably fouled the goalkeeper. Hannig's punt, 50-50 ball. Carroll lays it off. Lavrachenko, Lav Lavrinenko, excuse me. Back up the left side for Noonan. Noonan looking middle for Carroll, makes the move. To the top of the box, Max Volley scores! Indiana goes to the title game! For the second consecutive year, Indiana goes to the championship game. They are there to defend their 98 title. And UCLA, what a comeback to even force the overtime. People will be talking about that for a long time to come. But Ryan Mack putting the finishing touch on a nice little setup by the freshman, number 11, Pat Noonan of the Indiana Hoosiers. Noonan has looked skillful on the dribble all day long. Jerry Yeagley, a legend in NCAA soccer. Looking for his fifth NCAA championship this Sunday. There's Noonan and the slip by the defender Futagaki. And then he finds Ryan Mack loose at the top of the box. And the left footed drive through a little bit of traffic. You think Ramondo might have been a little bit screened. He just couldn't get to that one. And it's a quality shot. It's an excellent 
example of vision by Noonan to spot Mack near the top of the box, right at the edge, 18 yards out. He drills it, and it's fading away from Ramondo, and he couldn't keep it out. And what saves Ramondo had made earlier in the game? Jerry Yeagley has coached college soccer for 27 years at Indiana. This one will stand out when he finally calls it a career. He'll remember this night. Ryan Mack, the hero. Tennyson knocked out of the game with an injury. He goes for x-rays now. It was an epic. There are no losers. There is a survivor. Victorine pulled this UCLA team up when it was down 2-0. He couldn't stop Indiana. The champs have a chance to sudden death overtime period. And now Indiana advances to the championship game. The Adidas play of the match will give you one guess. Well, Pat Noonan starts it from the left side and slips it to Ryan Mack. And Ryan Mack, just a laser from the edge of the box, surprising Ramondo through a bit of a screen. And in our fourth sudden death overtime, Ryan Mack, our Chevy player of the match for the Indiana Hoosiers. He provided the game winning goal. He also set up the first goal of the game for Pat Noonan for Indiana. Sasha Victorine, the Chevy player of the match for UCLA. If that's what it takes to beat UCLA, the Bruins can walk off of this field with their heads held high. What an effort. Two sensational teams here. And Santa Clara with a spectacular effort awaiting Indiana in the championship game Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern time, 10 a.m. Pacific, live on ESPN. Coming up next, the NBA tonight.